Hello and welcome to Pre-Algebra Lesson 8. And in this video, we're going to learn about subtracting whole numbers using a number line. So for the lesson objectives, we want to learn how to identify the parts of a subtraction problem. And we also want to learn how to subtract whole numbers using a number line. So what is subtraction? Well, subtraction is the mathematical operation that allows us to take away. The main idea behind subtraction is to find out how much is left over. So suppose you have three $1 bills and you go to a fast food chain and you spend $2 of your $3 on a hamburger. How much would you have left? So you can kind of picture these three $1 bills with two crossed out now because you've spent those. Well, you just have one left. And this is basically the subtraction problem. Three, which is what the amount you start with, minus two, which is the amount you're gonna spend or the amount that's gonna be taken away, and that's gonna be equal to one which is the amount that you're gonna have left over after you've spent the money. So again, subtraction is the operation that allows us to take away. In the example, two was taken away from a starting amount of three. Again, we started with $3, we spent two, that's what's taken away, and then the result was one. That's what we had left over, we just had a buck left. Okay, so to be more formal, let's give names to the parts of a subtraction problem. So we're gonna start out with this called the menu end. Okay, the menu end. And this is the whole amount or starting value. So in the problem, three minus two equals one, the whole amount or starting value is three because I started out with $3. So this is the menu end. This is the menu end. Then the next part of the subtraction problem is called the subtrahend, okay, the subtrahend. So this is the amount being taken or subtracted away. So in the problem, three minus two equals one, two is the subtrahend. This is the subtrahend, okay? That's the amount that we took away to buy the hamburger. Then finally, we have the difference, okay? The difference. This is the result of the subtraction operation, basically what we have left over. So three minus two equals one. The one here, the result or what we have left over, is the difference. Okay, so let's just label these parts too. Again, this is the subtrahend. And this is the menu end. Okay, let's look at a few examples. We wanna name the parts of the following subtraction problems. So we have 13 minus seven equals six. So 13 is your menu end, your menu end, okay? This is the number from which another is subtracted from, or your starting amount, or the whole amount that you have, however you wanna think about this. This number 13 is your menu end. Then we're subtracting away seven from 13. Seven's what we're taking away, so this is the subtrahend. This is the subtrahend. And then finally, six is the result of the subtraction operation here. And so it's gonna be the difference. Okay, so six is the difference. And again, you can also think about the difference as just being the amount left over when you're finished performing the subtraction. I started with 13, that's my menu end. I took away seven, that's my subtrahend, and I have six left over after that operation, that's my difference. Okay, now we'll look at eight minus three equals five. The amount we're starting with, or your whole amount from which another is subtracted is eight. That's the menu end. Then we have three, that's what we're subtracting away, so eight minus three, okay, we're taking away three. That's the subtrahend. And then lastly, we have this five here. That's the result of our subtraction operation. We start with eight, we take away three, the result is five. So five is the difference. Okay, the next thing we wanna talk about, if you remember in addition, we have something called the commutative property. And the commutative property tells us that we can add in any order that we'd like, and we don't change the sum. So in other words, three plus nine is equal to nine plus three. 
right? 3 plus 9 equals 12, 9 plus 3 equals 12. Changing the order around doesn't affect what's going on with my answer. Now, what I want to draw your attention to is that it's very important to note that the commutative property that is associated with addition does not work with subtraction. Does not work with subtraction. So in most cases, if you change the order of your subtraction, you're not going to get the same answer. So I have some examples of this. And I started out with the addition one, just to show you that it does work for addition. 3 plus 6 equals 9. 6 plus 3 equals 9. This works out. 6 minus 3 is 3. 3 minus 6 is negative 3. And we haven't covered negative numbers yet or integers or anything. Just take my word for it. It's negative 3. So these two values are not the same. So the way that we subtract here made a difference. If I change the order, meaning I put, I go from having 3 last to 3 first, I don't get the same result. Same thing over here. 9 minus 2 is 7. 2 minus 9 is negative 7. So changing the order did change the result. And then lastly, we have 7 minus 5 is not equal to 5 minus 7. 7 minus 5 is 2. 5 minus 7 is negative 2. So again, changing the order does change the result when you're subtracting in almost all the cases. There are some special cases where it's not, but we want to have things as a general rule. So as a general rule, when you're adding, you can change the order around as much as you want. As a general rule, when you're subtracting, you cannot do that. Okay, so now let's talk a little bit about subtracting whole numbers on the number line. This exercise will help us greatly when we start working with integers. So we already practiced adding whole numbers on a number line. Yeah, it was a trivial thing, but it's going to help us when we get to integers, and it's going to be the same thing for subtracting. We need to get a foundation going so that when we get to integers, things flow more smoothly. Okay, so now we want to subtract each using a number line. And to perform subtraction on a number line, it's essentially the same as performing addition on a number line. It's just a little bit of a change on the second step. So let's just learn through an example. We have 7 minus 4. The first thing you're going to do is you're going to start at the leftmost number on the number line. So if you recall from adding on a number line, that step is the same. You always start at the leftmost number. So that's going to be right here. That's 7 on the number line. Now, when we add, so in other words, if we're adding 4, we move to the right by 4 units on the number line. But now since we're subtracting 4, okay, since we're doing subtraction, we're just going to the left by 4 units. So the only thing that's changing is instead of going to the right, we're going to the left. Other than that, the procedure is the same. So we're subtracting 4. We're just going to go 1, 2, 3, 4 units to the left. So that's going to put us at 3. And obviously we know 7 minus 4 is 3. But it's just cool to do it on a number line. So this is our result. So we have 7 minus 4 equals 3. Okay, now we have 12 minus 5. So we're going to start out at the leftmost number. So we're starting out at 12 on the number line. That's right here. And then we're subtracting away 5. So we're going to move 5 units to the left. So I'm going to go 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 units to the left, and I end up at 7. And of course, we all know 12 minus 5 is 7, but we just did it on a number line. So 12 minus 5 equals 7. Okay, now we have 8 minus 7. So again, we're starting out at the leftmost number on the number line. So we're starting out at 8. That guy's right here. And we're subtracting away 7. So we're moving 7 units to the left. So we're going to go 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, and then finally 7 units to the left. And we end up at 1. All right, we end up at 1. And of course, we know that 8 minus 7, 8 minus 7 is equal to 1. Okay, we'll look at one last problem. Overall, this is pretty simple, right? If you're adding on a number line, you start out at the leftmost number, you go to the right by the number of units you're adding. If you're subtracting on a number line, start at the leftmost number, you go to the left now by the number of units that you're subtracting away. So we have 5 minus 5. 5 minus 5. So that means I'm going to start out at 5 on the number line. That's right here. And then if I'm taking away 5, we know that we're going to end up at 0, right? Because a number minus itself is 0. So let's go 5 units to the left. 1, 2, 3, 
four and five. Okay, so we end up at zero right here and five minus five equals zero.